Hello, FBC Salinas. This is Pastor John coming to you with another edition of the Midweek Refresher video, where I desire to do two things. Number one, provide you information. Number two, provide you inspiration in the middle of your week. Certainly hope your week is going well, and if not, may this video serve as a reminder that our God is with us, that he's walking with us, and that he will not let us down. So, hey, we're going to hop right into the informational portion of this particular midweek refresher video, and there are a number of informational things. The first is this. This week, we start, we relaunch every single one of our, of our weekly ministries. It starts this evening with uh, this Bible study that I lead on Wednesday night via Zoom. It goes from 6.30 to 8. An email has gone out with the Zoom link on there. Love to have you join us as we continue unpacking this wonderful letter that Paul wrote to the Galatians. And so that's tonight from 6.30 to 8 p.m. via Zoom. Hope you can join us there. Thursday night from 6.30 to 8 here on the campus, we have Awana. Uh, Lorraine and her wonderful children's ministry crew are going to be uh, ministering to these children through the ministry of Awana. It is always a great time, and we look forward to having that get going this week. And then also from 6.30 to 8, we will have our student ministry journey. It's for junior high to high school students. We start this Thursday night. Looking forward to it. We'll meet originally in the gym, and then we'll make our way over to the youth room. And I look forward to how God is going to guide our student ministry this particular year. We have a lot of exciting things coming our way, and we look forward to having students' lives be impacted by God's grace. So that's for Wednesday and Thursday. This upcoming Sunday, whether uh, this is a rather odd thing, but normally every Sunday we have spiritual formation at 9 a.m., this Sunday, due to Labor Day weekend, we will not have spiritual formation classes at 9 a.m., so keep that in mind. We will gather for worship in the sanctuary at 1030, and that leads to this. We have our annual Labor Day picnic this Sunday, right after the worship service. It'll take place out on the, out on the back lawn. The church will provide hot dogs, hamburgers, buns, condiments, water, all that. What do you need to provide? That's a great question. You need to provide delicious desserts and or sensational side dishes. That would be great. So we'll look forward to that. We're looking forward to gathering together, celebrating. I understand it might be a little bit warm this Sunday, so dress accordingly. If you can, please bring lawn chairs. There'll be some chairs here at the church that you can use, but we would appreciate you bringing lawn chairs so we we'll have enough uh, seating for whoever shows up, all right? So that's this Sunday after the worship service. Also this Sunday, you are going to hear about life groups again. I'm going to have the privilege to interview somebody about the impact that the life group ministry has had in their life. Look forward to hearing from them about this. And also there'll be signups afterwards. If you're interested in joining a life group, there'll be signups available at the Welcome Center. If you have questions about this, please email Tracy at fbcsalinas.com. She can answer your questions with that. And also this Sunday, we will be taking a special offering for people affected by the wildfires in Maui. And so please prayerfully consider what you could contribute to that as they've been devastated by this. And so we are collecting an offering for them to help in whatever way possible we can as they recover from this time. All right. So that's this Sunday. Looking forward to it. We're also celebrating communion. So those of you that are joining us online for worship, please be ready for that as we uh, have your elements ready for that as we celebrate communion and remembering what Jesus Christ has done for us. And that sort of provides a segue into what I want to talk about as far as the inspirational portion. Part of my devotional time is reading a psalm every single day along with the gospel and or a chapter of the gospel and so forth and so on. But I was struck by this psalm. It's Psalm 79. I'm going to read an awful lot of it, and what hit me was how the psalmist responds. Listen to these words. O oh God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. They have left the dead bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your own people for the animals of the wild. They poured out blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury the dead. We are objects of contempt to our neighbors, 
of scorn and derision to those around us. The psalmist is sharing some deep, deep pain. He's seeing the devastation of God's people. He's seeing the devastation of, of Jerusalem, God's city, and he doesn't know what to do. And these are such graphic things. I mean, they have left the dead bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your own people for the animals of the wild. That is incredibly graphic. And he can't, he, he's trying to understand what's going on. And then he comes to this, begins to reach a conclusion in verse 5. He says, how long, Yahweh, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. So he's saying, Lord, you see what's going on. We, we, we need you to do something about these people that are attacking us. And it's almost like a light bulb went off at that point. And all of a sudden he realized, oh my, we're in this predicament because of us. Listen to verse 8. Do not hold against us the sins of past generations. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Isn't that something? He's crying out for wrath to be poured out on these nations that do not acknowledge God. And all of a sudden, the psalmist realizes, wait a second. We're the ones that have gone astray. We're the ones that have sinned. We're the ones that are in past generations. They've done this, this, and this, and there are consequences. And then he says this, and I find this very, very interesting. Verse 9. Help us, God, our Savior. He cries out for help. Our sin leads us to places that we never anticipated going. Our sin leads us to treating people poorly. Our sin leads us to being angry when we need to show, we need to show forgiveness and grace. Our sin leads us to places of isolation where we think that nobody cares. Our sin leads us to these places that are so dark and, and devastating to us in so many different ways. And the psalmist acknowledges, we need your help. And notice the reason. It's for the glory of your name. We cry out to God, not, because, not just because we're in trouble, but we cry out to God because of the glory of his name. As he reaches into that situation and raises us up and he says, you, you, can, you can be restored and, and people can see the restoration happen. And then listen to this. Same verse. Deliver us and forgive our sins. That's beautiful, isn't it? But listen to this. For your name's sake. He doesn't say deliver us and forgive, forgive our sins for us. He says deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. The reason why we are forgiven is to bring God glory. The reason why we are forgiven is to, it's to live a life that, that is free from, from, the, from, the, from the, just the the nastiness, the isolation of our sin. The reason why we're forgiven isn't just for those reasons. The reason why we're forgiven is because it brings God glory. You're forgiven upon placing your trust in Jesus Christ. I'm forgiven upon placing my trust in Jesus Christ. And that happened a long time ago, and he continues to do that. John says these words in 1 John. He says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's my prayer for you, it's my prayer for me, that we would run to the one that we desperately need. And that as he forgives us, that that forgiveness would cause us to bring him more glory so that other people can see there's a beautiful thing called forgiveness and it's found in Jesus Christ. Because we have all gone astray, haven't we? And listen to the way he wraps us up. Then, this is verse 13, Then as your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. From generation to generation, we will proclaim your praise. Take some time today. Take some time this week and bring praise to the Lord Almighty who has forgiven you of your sin, not just for you, but for his sake. And as you do that, 
May other people experience the power of seeing how forgiveness can work in their lives by turning to Jesus Christ, just as you have, just as I have. And may that bring him all the glory. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day. And I look forward to continuing following after Jesus alongside you. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.